Question 3. DS. On February 1st, 1990, John invested $50,000 at a quarterly compound interest rate of R%. If the interest rate is constant, after one year, is the amount of interest earned greater than $2,000? Condition 1. On July 1st, 1990, John received an interest of $1,005. Condition 2. On April 1st, 1990, John received interest of $500. Solution. Now we will solve this DS question using the variable approach. Tip 5 says that for an inequality question, any condition that contains an equation is likely to be the answer. Let's apply the three steps suggested previously. Follow the first step of the variable approach by modifying and rechecking the original condition and the question. We have to find out whether the interest amount, I, in a year is greater than $2,000. That is, is I greater than $2,000? let us look at the information from the original condition. The original condition is a bit lengthy and can be confusing, but we can modify the original condition as I is greater than 2,000. We can say from the word than in the question that we are dealing with inequality. Both the conditions deal with an equation, and consequently, D should be the answer as per case 3 of tip 5. The answer to this question will be in terms of a unique value of yes or no. And therefore, we apply CMT1 to this question. If this question appears in the actual exam, you might get sweaty and dizzy, wanting to skip to the next question. Tip 5 is the savior, so memorize it carefully. But let's use the variable approach to solve this DS. Let the amount of interest be I, and the quarterly compound interest rate is already given as R. The amount of interest in one year will be I equals 50,000 times 1 plus R over 100 to the fourth power minus 50,000. And the question becomes 50,000 times 1 plus R over 100 to the fourth power minus 50,000 greater than 2,000. Just for understanding, why does the interest amount become 50,000 times 1 plus r over 100 to the fourth power minus 50,000. Total amount including interest. Principal of 50,000. After the first quarter, 50,000 plus 50,000 times r percent equals 50,000 times 1 plus r percent, which equals 50,000 times 1 plus r over 100. After second quarter, $50,000 times 1 plus R over 100 plus $50,000 times 1 plus R over 100 times R over 100 equals $50,000 times 1 plus R over 100 times 1 plus R over 100 equals $50,000 times 1 plus R over 100 squared. After the third quarter, 50,000 times 1 plus R over 100 cubed. And after the fourth quarter, 50,000 times 1 plus R over 100 to the fourth power. So, the interest amount after the fourth quarter, 50,000 times 1 plus R over 100 to the fourth power, minus 50,000. Follow the second and third steps. From the original condition, we have two variables. I and R, and one equation. I equals 50,000 times 1 plus R over 100 to the fourth power minus 50,000. To match the number of variables with the number of equations, we need one more equation. Since conditions 1 and 2 will provide one equation each, D would most likely be the answer. The answer is D because there is one variable but sometimes you can't find a variable. Tip 5 is the savior that appears right in front of you. Recall three principles and choose D as the most likely answer. Each condition separately. 
Let's therefore take a look at each condition separately. Condition 1 tells us that John received interest of $1,005 on July 1st, 1990, which means $1,005 in the second quarter. Then we get 50,000 times 1 plus r over 100 squared minus 50,000 equals 1,005. We do not need to solve further as we can solve this equation to get a value of r. Also, we can say if the interest in the second quarter is 1,005. The interest in all the four quarters will be greater than 2 times 1,005, which equals 2,010, because of the compound interest rate. So, the total interest is greater than 2,010, which is greater than 2,000, and we get yes. And the condition is sufficient by CMT1 which means that the answer should be in terms of a unique yes or no. Condition 2 tells us that John received interest of $500 on April 1st, 1990. That is the interest received in the first quarter. Then we get 50,000 times R over 100 equals 500. That is R equals 1. We do not need to solve further as we can solve this equation to get the value of R. Also, we can say if the interest in the first quarter is 500, the interest in all the four quarters will be greater than 4 times 500, which equals 2,000. So the total interest is greater than 2,000. We get yes, and the condition is sufficient by CMT1 which means that the answer should be in terms of a unique yes or no. You can solve the question using the variable approach, or you can solve the question using tip 5 as explained below. Also by case 3 of tip 5. DS, original condition. Q, greater than 2000. Condition 1, receive. Condition 2, receive then D is the most likely answer. The answer is D because than, is, is, D. Tip 5 is very useful, so remember it carefully. When the question is an inequality, the condition that contains an equation is the correct answer. Each condition alone is sufficient, so D is the correct answer. Answer, D.